All right, let's talk about a key issue in global agriculture, sustainable yield intensification. We're going to start with the yield intensification part. We need to boost the boost agricultural yields around the world uh, on agriculture's existing footprint. Why? Well, as you may have heard, uh, world population is increasing quite a bit. It's alarming people. It seems exponential. And as we need to feed, you know, we're going to need to feed more people. And because these people are getting wealthier, which is a good thing, as people emerge from extreme poverty, they tend to demand more richer foods. So this includes more meat, and that's going to require more grain to feed those animals. Uh, fortunately, population is not likely to increase forever. Uh, demographers predict that population should start to kind of taper off by mid to late century. Um, and then we can reach a sustainable population size going forward in the future. But demographers and other agricultural scientists around the world think that we're going to need to boost food production in something like 70% by 2050, maybe double it by uh, 2100, and like I said before, on agriculture's existing foot footprint. We don't really want to expand agriculture into the natural areas of the world that are so important for conserving biodiversity. So. Uh, that's an important part of the sustainability of sustainable yield intensification, reducing the amount of land that's needed to feed everybody. Um, how are we going to do that in this class? We're going to focus on a couple of different types of technology. First, we're going to focus on information technology, and we're going to learn to use microcontrollers. They're basically small computers, we'll be using the Arduino, that you can connect to sensors, you can relay all of this massive amount of data to the cloud for further analytics or even machine learning. And this information can be used to actuate, you know, motors, to make robots, to make mm, sophisticated agricultural equipment. So what would be a good example of one of these Arduino-driven devices? Well, one would be a drone, that, like a quadcopter drone. You've probably seen them. That takes pictures of fields, and then those images can be brought into Google Earth or Google Maps. They can be done with, um, you can take near-infrared photography so you can get an idea of plant health, and they help farmers understand sort of the spatial heterogeneity of their fields, where for, uh, plants are doing well and where plants aren't doing so well. Also, we can build sensor moats and install those in the field, and these little mini weather stations um, allow us to get a under, good understanding of temperature, soil moisture, the nitrogen available in the soil, uh, so that just to the right amount of fertilizer can be applied. And how do you apply the fertilizer? Well, you add the same technology to your tractors. So we've got GPS-driven tractors that can apply precise uh, or different amounts of fertilizer on each uh, square meter of the soil. So this, by you know, dialing back the amount of fertilizer and the amount of water and the amount of, say, pesticides that only need to be used to, uh, to take care of some pest problems in just the areas that the drone identifies, it allows us to dial back farmer inputs. This not only saves farmers money, which is good, but it, could pr it protects the environment as well. Because if we overuse fertilizer, of course, as you may know, nitrogen can leak out of fields and show up in our streams, eutrophy the streams, and end up causing dead zones uh, in the gulfs around the world. So this is a great way that we're bringing the Internet of Things to agriculture. But also in this course, you'll be learning about how to improve crops to make them more drought resistant, disease resistant, pest resistance, and easier, it'll be easier to control weeds. Let's take a look at that. So here I have a crop plant, and of course the good parts of the plant could be the uh, the roots, like cassava, or potato, the shoots, or even the fruits. And um, as you certainly realize, crops are under constant threat from insect pests that not only uh, erode yields, but also bring pathogens uh, into crops. And so if, you can, if we can make new varieties of crops through traditional plant breeding or transgenic techniques more pest resistant by, by producing, say, their own pesticides, we can uh, really boost yields globally. Uh, likewise, one problem, 
course, in agriculture is weeds. If you've ever had to weed your garden, you can weed it manually. You can weed fields manually, or what's often done in large-scale agriculture is you till the ground, which uh, reduces weedy competition both before the growing season and during the growing season. But the problem with tillage is, of course, it can contribute to soil erosion, kind of uh, breaks up <coughs> breaks up the soil, or makes the, and makes the soil more compact. Uh, and so you can actually reduce your water use and your nitrogen use uh, uh, and eliminate weeds all at the same time by adopting no-till methods. Now, no-till methods are facilitated by the application of, pestis of, of herbicides, uh, and so you want to make your crop plants herbicide resistant. So in this case, what you're reducing uh, is you're reducing tillage, reducing water, and you're reducing pesticide applications. Now, we might want to make crops disease resistant. Transgenic uh, crops are a really good uh, way to do this. In fact, there is a disease that's kind of spreading um, across sub-Saharan Africa, cassava brown streak disease, which is really putting the food security of some of, of hundreds of millions of the world's poorest farmers, uh, you know, it's, it's threatening that. So um, <coughs> we'll be learning exactly how plant breeders and scientists improve crops themselves. So with these two approaches, that bringing the Internet of Things to agriculture and improving crop plants, we're going to basically trying to intensify yield sustainably. Instead of doing what we've done during the Industrial Revolution by doing more with more, we're going to be trying to do more with less. So that it is more yields, which means more farmer income with less water, less nitrogen, less tillage, less fuel, less labor. Uh, and less land, which is so important. What are, the, what are some of the results of this? Well, some scientists did a meta-study, about 100, 150 uh, different uh, uh, crop sites around the world, and they found that by using transgenic approaches, farmers were able to reduce pesticides by 37% globally. They were able to boost yields 22%, so that's going up, and when you reduce your inputs and increase your yields, they can boost farmer income by 68%. And of course, boosting farmer income around the world is very important. In fact, small farmers can benefit from this more than large farmers can with some of these great uh, extendable technologies. By boosting farmers' revenue around the world, that enables people to make a shift from subsistence farming to commercial farming, to make good, to create good businesses. Uh, and when farmers have more money, they can spend more money on education and on health care, and ultimately nudge their whole society through the demographic transition such that our global population might top out around 9 billion and not 11 billion or even the worst case scenario 13 billion. So by doing by through promoting sustainable yield intensification and doing more with less using growing more crops on less land we might actually contribute towards uh, uh, creating a more sustainable population size which means a more habitable world for us all.